Hi, I'm Greg Garcia. I'm here at the Anglers All studio. I'm going to be tying a new fly today called the Mother's Day Sally. It's kind of an offshoot of the of my Mother's Day cat, caddis that Umpqua has and uh, they just recently picked up the Sally version which has a orange bead on the back for the little egg sac and uh, we might as well get started tying. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I got a dry fly hook here, a Tamco 100, size 14, and we're going to put this little bead on there. And what I've found the easiest way to do this is just if you can just wet your finger, and that bead will stick onto your finger from the uh, from the table, and then just. Grab your hook, get that bead on there, slip it around, that hook back into the vise. And I'm going to start my orange thread right at about 75% point of this hook. So there's 50%, 75 is about right there. That'll just kind of give me a measurement as to where to start and stop some material. I'm going to bring this orange thread back towards the barb of the hook. And we'll get this bead. I'm going to slide it up. If I had long fingernails, this would probably be a little easier. What I've done is I've just slid it right up to where it is just right above the barb of the hook. And I'm simply going to bring my thread behind the bead, make a wrap, and then I'm going to come forward. And then that is secured in there. You could give it a drop of cement if you're worried about that thread breaking, but um, I've never really had that happen, so I think we're in good shape. Now we can just do a couple turns, whip finish. I'm going to cut my orange thread off and reattach my light K hill. This is a uni A dot. We're going to get our dubbing, which is a super fine dubbing in uh, pale yellow. Dubbing wax on my finger. What I'm going to do is just kind of trap the very end of this and then draw it down. Then I can kind of get that going parallel to the thread. Then I can just zip it right on. And I'm just going to put some little thin layers here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make several passes here with my dubbing loop and what I want to do is have the same diameter of this bead so I have to put some more dubbing on here again a little bit of dubbing on a lot of thread you can get a pretty tight little dubbing noodle. I think we're almost there. Just a pinch more. This is a great fly to have in your box for kind of midsummer when little yellow stone flies, a little yellow sally start popping out. Okay. Next thing I've done is I've kind of pre-prepped 
three types of flash. I have one strand of this uh, Mirage flash, the Flasher Boo Mirage. It's the flatter piece here. It's almost like a mirror. So it's going to take all these different colors and bounce them around. Um, I also have about three pieces of hot orange crystal flash and about three pieces of a lime green crystal flash. And I'm going to tie all of these pieces forward. And then I'm going to pull them back. So what that does is it just doubles up my count of everything I've just put in. Plus, it's a lot more durable. Um, you won't be able to pull this out. So it makes for a very durable underwing on this fly. Then I'll just kind of cut that right back to the bend of the, the hook. Next thing I'm going to do is I have some bleached stimulator hair. This piece actually has some little nice little markings in it, but you could also use just some bleach. Um, yearling elk would look real nice on this. And I'm going to cut some out and prep it up. I've cut that off the, the hide. I like to hold that by the tip and then what I'm going to do is just run my comb right through that from almost the tip down, get rid of any soft underbody fur, throw that into my stacker, tip down. Give it a few wraps. Do you see any little broken tips? I can see one right here, top of my fingernail, so I'm just going to pull that out. Might have to restack this again. Okay. The amount to use. You know, if you kind of use the gauge of your, the gap of your hook is kind of determining, you know, kind of a starting point. Then as you kind of tie these, you can kind of get some ideas of, you know, exactly how much you need in there. Maybe a little less, a little bit more. And uh, I'm going to lay that right on top of the hook. So these tips come out right about to the bend of the hook. And then I'm going to make two soft wraps and then I'm going to tighten up. Really let that get in there. Then I'm going to pull a few butts back, make another wrap right in that crease. Then I'm just going to continue my, my way forward, pull a few butt sections back at a time. This really ties the wing in. And also when I go to clip this, it's going to be a lot cleaner tie-off point too. Do a couple more wraps there. One more there. I'm going to go right up to one eye width back and I can kind of stop. Make sure everything is on top of the hook. We'll kind of clean that up a little bit here. I'm going to come in. I'm going to cut this at an angle as close as I can to the hook. Give me a nice clean spot here. Lost a few little fibers, but that's pretty normal. And then I can clean this up. At the same time, I can pull all this hair up, make sure it is on top of the hook. I think by tying this in in this fashion, 
just makes for a really nice clean spot here to tie in your hackle and dub your thorax. All right, I've pre-prepped some um, hackle. This is a medium done. I want it to be about as long as my thorax and maybe just a pinch longer. So I'm going to cut just a little bit of this off, laying that on my side of the hook. Come back down this ramp. At this point, I want to make sure my hackle is laying in and it's going to wrap properly. Sometimes if you, it's easy for that hackle stem to twist on you and then your hackle starts pointing forward. Put just a little bit of dubbing on my thread. I'm going to start at the bottom of this ramp, go straight up, and then right back down. Leave room for your head of this fly. All right, so this hackle, this is a size 16 hook. So what I've done is I have picked out one size smaller hackle. So this is a size at a size 16. It's going to run right down this thorax. Can get one more wrap in here. Let's stop it right there. Sometimes you no use fighting it. Normally I'll tie that off on the top, but on this particular one I'm going to tie it off at the side here on my side. Then at this point, we'll just make a nice little head for this fly. Get our whip finish tool. There we go. Mother's Day Sally. A nice little bright bead on the back side. I always like to put a little drop of cement on the head. Looks for a little bit more durable fly. But if it's whip finished properly, you probably don't even need to use it. But there you go. There you go. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you uh, tie this fly and have some luck with it. I'm pretty excited about having it in the bins. So thank you very much.